The first call came into the Everett Police Department at approximately 1825, 80, well, that would be 625 this evening. Okay, someone there. Everett Police. Right. Okay. Someone there. Oh, well, a friend of uh, Pete Peters, uh, uh, God, why can't I remember his name? Jerry, uh, called the, uh, the Seattle Flight Center. Okay, when he called the Seattle Flight Center, they had already seen, or they were seeing the object at the time. Seattle Flight Center at the same time was in touch with high brass in Washington, D.C. They called the Seattle Flight Center and they were in touch. They, did they have the object under observation? They did. They did at the time. I, I don't know if they had it exactly at that time, but when the object was reported, a call was made to Seattle Flight Center. They claimed, Seattle Flight Center said that they were, they saw it, or they were in the process of seeing it, okay. and they were in touch with Washington, D.C. Okay. The object was seen as far as Alberta, Canada, was seen as far east as Spokane, and other cities across the state. Uh, it was seen as far north? Well, it, uh, as far north, north as Alberta, Canada. Alberta. It was seen as, as far east as Spokane. Okay. Okay, now jury called Payne Field, and he was notified that Payne Field had the object under observation for three minutes. Okay. He then called the Whitby Island Naval Station, talked to whoever he talked to there. They said they had the object under observation for approximately five minutes. A helicopter pilot also saw the object. He estimated the object at between three to five thousand feet. Is this uh, the NAS? Uh, I think so. The general description. Three to five thousand. Yeah, and that, there's a big problem there, okay? This is uh, uh, visual estimate. Visual, visual estimate. Okay. Uh, okay, now, the object was described as being very bright orange, giving off sparks and flames, just like the other one last year. Bright orange. Okay, New York, just a Now, as I understand it, Whitby Island tried to get the object on radar, nothing showed. No radar. The object had a flat trajectory, traveling from west to east. According to witnesses, the object, they followed the object intermittently through the cloud layer that was twirling around. And uh, the last thing they saw was the object looked like it just exploded or b broke into pieces. Okay, uh, was there any audible sound? No sound reported, okay. although hundreds and hundreds of witnesses on bases. Coast Guard had also sighted it. And uh, that's all he, he said about that aspect of it. They said they don't know how many witnesses there are, except that they've been getting calls and people on the bases. There's a lot of witnesses on the bases. This is coming in to, you're speaking of calls in the Snohomish County Radio Central. All over, through all the... Uh, and you're headed from Canada down. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, that's the preliminaries that he got in, uh, what was it, 20 minutes. 
Okay. He's, uh, he's going to check further. He wanted to know if I should check this up, and I told him, indeed, try to check him up. And I told him something, and I, and I believe this. It. it seems that these fireball-type sightings yeah. always are followed by a flap. Yeah. And I told him to watch it. You know, I think that, that may, uh, it may be indicative of a flap. I told him... There's more to it than that, because this thing was seen for, like you say, for five minutes. Yeah, well, see, there's a problem, see. The estimate is very, to, to, for an object to be seen for three or five minutes, and the witnesses said it was traveling very slow. Yeah. Uh, it would have either had to be really high and extremely huge, or very low, or medium, you know, yeah. three to five thousand feet, right. and going slow. And it ain't no goddamn bolide. Uh, so that's it. Uh, he's going to call me tomorrow night. There may be some witnesses down here who, at the uh, Seattle Flight Center who may want to talk. And I'm going to go down and uh, do some investigations on that. Uh, and he's going to do some more checking tonight. He'll either call me tomorrow, but when he comes here on Sunday, he may have most of the report all typed up. He's calling Heineck off on that. Okay. And that's it. Very good. Okay, we'll see you later. Right. Bye. Just uh, right during the news, and uh, I was looking, uh, the couch faces the, the window, and I just glanced out the window because I noticed this bright, glowing object. Like, uh, it wasn't it wasn't an airplane. I knew that because they have those uh, mercury lights in them yes. that are really bright lights. And uh, I've uh, been out with my cousin. And he's a, uh, he's a uh, lieutenant commander in the uh, Navy. You know, see these flight plans, flight uh, plans and training, yeah. training films and things. And uh, I knew it was an airplane. And I looked at it, and I saw what appeared to be sparks sitting out of the back of it. So immediately, what I thought it was was a uh, a plane in distress uh, on low power, which would cause the lights to dim, and uh, it was on fire. And I looked at it, and I started walking towards the window. I got up. And uh, I went to go out on the lanai, and it was gone. Just, it was, it, uh, I saw it glow. It looked like it was heading south for a couple, it looked like it hit, was heading south for about two seconds, and then it turned east immediately, and it accelerated. It accelerated, and a lot of sparks were coming out of the back immediately when it hit, started heading east. That's why it started to accelerate, you saw that, the sparks. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that was for about three and a half seconds. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. And that was it. Then I just, I opened the eye door, and it was gone. Mm -hmm. Everything, the sky was clear, and then I saw about five minutes later, uh, either a helicopter or an airplane begin to circle the area in which I saw it. Mm -hmm. Plane did move into the area. Yes, I uh, think either a plane or a, a some type of helicopter. Uh -huh. It was kind of like uh, north of Ballard. I see. It seemed like that's about the location where the plane was. Okay, fine. We heard about a helicopter being out there. We didn't know exactly where it was at. Okay, can we get one of our uh, investigators to call you up later for a little more extensive uh, information on this? That would be perfectly okay. The best time, in fact, the best time to call me would probably be around 8 or 9 in the evening because I'm always home and I'm always awake. Very good. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Did you want to say something else? Uh, no, it's... Oh, well, I was going to mention if you needed any recipes or anything, right? Well, that would be good. Okay. Thanks a lot for time. calling. Yes.